When we think of Pixar movies, we typically think of wonderful stories that tug on our heartstrings. Stories that teach us something about humanity and make us feel all sorts of emotions. Whether it's happiness, laughter, or uncontrollable sadness. Coincidence? I think not! But let's not gloss over the fact that Pixar also has its fair share of deaths and killing. I suppose it makes sense given the fact that the studio hasn't shied away from more mature topics in its storytelling. But today, we're really gonna break it down. We want to know exactly how much killing there is in the Pixar universe. We want a number. Welcome to Wicked Binge, this is the Pixar Kill Count. So let's start things out with the rules. Counting kills can be a bit tough. If this were a more realistic movie or TV show, we would likely limit deaths to humans only. But this is Pixar, and humans aren't usually the focal point of these stories. Pixar just has a habit for making everything human-like. Toys, bugs, cars, emotions. So we really can't make that distinction here. We're going to include any death that we witness on or off screen and the ones that are only mentioned or referenced that are pivotal to a plot point. Then there are the instances where the concept of death is slightly different in the context of a certain film's world. Think Coco or Inside Out. We'll explain how these are counted when we get there. And finally, we'll be working our way through the Pixar feature film library chronologically, in the order in which the films were released. With that said, let's begin. Starting with the original Toy Story. Despite having a few rather gruesome moments, at least from the perspective of a toy, Toy Story doesn't have a whole lot of death, at least ones that we can confirm. Sid's room is essentially a torture chamber where he rips his toys apart limb by limb, but for the most part, they're reassembled. Not exactly how they once were, which is especially terrifying, but these toys survive, which is why we can't include his sister's doll, Janie, or the pterodactyl toy. But there is one exception. We're gonna need a moment of silence for Combat Carl. Sid blows up this G.I. Joe style action figure with some serious firepower. And there isn't anything left after the dust clears, making him the first casualty of the Pixar universe. Which brings us to our next movie, A Bug's Life. First, we'll quickly mention Hopper and Molt's mother who they reference very, very quickly as having died, and that Hopper promised her that he wouldn't murder his brother. We also have Harry the Mosquito, who is attracted to a deadly bug zapper lantern. He gets zapped and falls to his death. Then, during one of the greatest dictator speeches in animated history, three of Hopper's minions, including Axel and Loco, are made an example of by their leader and crushed to death. Finally, Hopper meets his gruesome end when he's picked up by a bird and fed alive to her babies. Which may very well be the most gruesome death in any Pixar film. Next up, there aren't any deaths in Toy Story 2, and although some would argue that Monsters, Inc. also falls into the no-death category, we're gonna go ahead and claim one kill for Randall. Yes, it's tough to say, but when he's thrown into the human world and mistaken for a gator, the implication sure seems to be that he's being exterminated like a pest with a shovel. So we're gonna count it. Now, the next movie starts out super dark in terms of death, and that movie is Finding Nemo. We've said it in other videos, as far as the death toll goes, Finding Nemo is essentially the saving private Ryan of Pixar movies, considering Marlon's whole family, minus him and Nemo, are wiped out by a barracuda. But what is the exact number? Well, we won't be able to know for sure, but the best that we can do to tally is take what Coral mentions. She says that there are over 400 eggs. There's over 400 eggs. So if we assume the bare minimum is 401, and Nemo survives, that's 400 deaths. And then of course, Coral herself dies too. Later on, we hear about poor Chuckles being shook to death by Darla. And then of course, the horrifying scene in which the anglerfish is eaten. Finding Nemo actually has the biggest body count if only for that opening scene, but The Incredibles also has its fair share of death. Thunderhead is sucked up with a missile by his cape, Stratagale is sucked into a wind turbine by her cape, Meta Man was crushed by an elevator shaft due to the snagging of his cape, Dynaguy has his cape snagged around his neck, and Splashdown is sucked into a tornado by his cape. 
we're also going to include Gazer Beam, one of the supers who fell to the Omnidroid V4, because we get a glimpse of his corpse. And on this note, we also have a very quick reference to the following supers being killed while fighting various versions of the Omnidroid. Universal Man, Psych Wave, Everseer, Macrobust, Phylang, Blazestone, Downburst, Hypershock, Apogee, Blitzerman, Tradewind, Vectress, Stormside, and Gamma Jack. And these get a little murky, but we're going to include several guards who are killed, or at least who we think are killed. The two guards that Mr. Incredible throws a huge piece of metal at near the front gate are definitely dead, and the one guard he nailed in the head with a rock falls pretty hard from a good distance, so we're calling that a kill. Then the guard that Dash fights on top of his little flying machine blows up when it hits the mountain. Then when Dash is being chased by three more, one guard crashes his ship over the water when it hits something. And then the two other guards piloting crash into one another inside the cave. When Dash and Violet are running through the woods, they smash another guard's ship into a tree which blows up. When the family reunites, Mr. Incredible takes an empty ship and throws it at an oncoming guard ship, blowing it up and killing him. And then of course, during the climax of the film, the supervillain, Buddy, is sucked up into a jet turbine by his cape. There's probably a lesson there. No capes. There are no deaths in the movie Cars, so we'll skip that one and go to Ratatouille. First off, we have both Gusto and Alfredo's mother, who are mentioned and both die off screen of unknown causes. But the scene that is the most memorable for its darkness is definitely the one with the 17 rats that have been snapped by rat traps and displayed in a store window, like some sort of crusade's crucifixion. This scene got dark quick. Now we get to Wally. -E. Now the creative motivation for this movie was to humanize robots. They were the main characters after all. So in this case, we will be including robot deaths, which does actually increase our count quite a bit. There are 48 dead Wally -E robots that we see, who presumably passed away when their batteries died. We're counting robots in this movie, so we have to count them. Go 4 takes a serious fall, and that's a pretty obvious robot death. Eve shoots a security robot in the chest with a laser, and we also see 33 more security bots destroyed immediately after during the fight. And then of course, Otto is crushed and killed at the end. We're also going to include the five captains that are referenced briefly who died before the events of the film. Moving on to Up. It might not have the biggest kill count, but I would argue it has the most emotionally impactful. Right away, the movie starts out with a miscarriage in the intro. Good God, Pixar. And of course, Carl's beloved Ellie dies of old age. Then we have the surveyor, botanist, and explorer that were killed by Charles Muntz. Now, Toy Story 3 had one of the darkest scenes in Pixar history where we thought everyone was going to die, but they all survived, so there were no deaths in the movie. So let's move on to Cars 2. Cars 2 actually gets really grim. Leland Turbo is crushed by a car crusher used by Professor Z's goons. Nick Gremlin fell into the sea after Finn sprayed oil slick. Then there are actually 15 unnamed henchman cars that are blown up in a fiery explosion. Then Rod Torque Redline is shot with the electromagnetic pulse on full power, which blows up his engine. And this one's pretty dark, he's literally tortured to death. Fred Pacer and Paul Hugo are crushed in an elevator, and Tony Trehull is blown up by Finn's bombs that are pulled into his magnet. The next Pixar movie, Brave, only has one single death, and that of course is the death of Morgan. Now Inside Out is one of those movies where death is a little bit different. We're dealing with emotions after all. Cloud Guy is casually blown away by Bing Bong, and I think we can count that as a death. And if that's the case, Joy also kills his wife. But the saddest death in the movie, obviously, is that of Bing Bong, Riley's imaginary friend who sacrifices himself so Joy can carry on her journey. Sorry Bing Bong, gone but not forgotten. Well, I guess technically he was forgotten, but what are you gonna do? Now we head to a prehistoric time for the good dinosaur. Henry is tragically swept away on a tidal wave, a prehistoric bug has its head ripped off by Spot, and of course Thunderclap is killed during the climax of the movie. Side note, this is the most underwhelming showdown with a villain I've seen from the end of any movie. There is only one death in Finding Dory. The giant squid is crushed while trying to eat Nemo. Serves it right. Which brings us to Coco. And this one creates a bit of a logical issue in the context of a kill count. That being that everyone in the land of the dead is, well, you know, dead. 
But we're not gonna count every single person we see there. Instead, we're only counting those who we see die in the human world or die in the land of the dead. So Chicharron fades away after his wife forgets about him, Hector is poisoned by Ernesto de la Cruz, and Ernesto de la Cruz is crushed by a giant bell. Finally, Mama Coco dies of old age and is finally reunited with her father. We're taken back to the Incredibles universe with The Incredibles 2, where Winston and Evelyn Deaver's parents die. Their father is shot to death by thieves, and their mother dies from a heart attack from grief. Moving on to the movie Onward, Wilden Lightfoot dies of an unspecified illness. He also fades away after the 24 hours runs out, but we'll only count that as one single kill. And an artificial dragon is destroyed by Ian Lightfoot. Finally, we get to Soul. Joe Gardner's dad dies of unknown causes, and we weren't sure if they should count because they were revived. But Joe Gardner and the hospital cat die, but are revived when Joe takes 22's badge. We'll count them. Same with Paul, who has his soul accidentally taken out by Terry when he was mistaken for Joe. Wow, that's a lot of carnage for a family animation studio. Pixar really isn't afraid to get dark when they have to. Let us know in the comments section what you think was the most memorable Pixar death. Be sure to hit that notification bell, and most importantly, stay wicked.